MP to all cars. Armed robbery on security vehicles Julian now. Four to MP. All men. Of watch. Just one one MP. Disturbance in High Street. Gang of youths MP fighting with knives. One one. Request assistance. Over. Suspects on premises. Morning, Sarge. Morning, Tony. Guess what? You've just won today's star prize. Huh? What's that? Mr Roach said the first sergeant in was to see her. Her? Yeah, the lady waiting downstairs. Tully, I haven't got time to play guessing games. What's this all about? Well, the duty sergeant phoned, said a young lady had come in. Would someone see her? It was a CID matter. I took her into the interview room and Mr Roach checked and said it was a job for the first sergeant in. Oh, did he? What else have we got to do? Well, the lady has been waiting half an hour. OK, let's see her together. But I'm doing a report. Leave it. Come and take some notes. Yes, Sarge. What's she like? Uh, ordinary. You know, the kind. About 30. She seemed a bit nervous. I'm not surprised, meeting a tough copper like you. Thank you, Sarge. Her name's Alcott. Miss Mary Alcott. Thanks. Sorry to keep you waiting, Miss Alcott. Uh, I'm Detective Sergeant Brooke, and DC Tully already know. Uh, yes. No need to stand, Miss Alcott. Take a seat. Thank you. Would you like a cup of tea or coffee? Uh, no, no, thank you. Now then, what can we do for you? Well, I'm not sure. You might think this is silly, but I've come to ask your advice. My advice? Well, police advice. Uh-huh. About what? I've been left some money. Quite a lot of money, for me. £9,000. Well, more than £9,000, but... I'm not sure about it. It doesn't seem right. Why? I don't know where it came from. But you said it was left to you? Yes, by my uncle. Yes, well, then you do know where it came from. No, he never had any money, Sergeant Brooke. It is Sergeant Brooke. Yes, that's right. But it isn't really a matter for us, is it, miss? What? Unless you think there was something wrong in your uncle having this money. I do, Mr Brooke, I'm afraid I do. My uncle never had any money. He was a down and out. He lived on social security and, and handouts. About 20 years ago, his wife died. He never recovered, went to pieces... He let his job go, family go, took to drink. You've had him in this station, often. What was his name? Dennison. Tim Dennison. He was my mother's brother. Oh, old Denny. That rings a bell, doesn't it, Tully? Yes, Sarge. Well, if you know about him, you know why I'm worried. Why I came to you. I mean, where did he get all that money? What would happen if, if I spent it and it wasn't his? I couldn't pay it back. I couldn't afford to... Not with my job. What do you do? I'm a cleaner at an old people's home. Yes, and you don't like it? No. It isn't much of a job. Not much pay, either. And this money would come in handy? Yes. Then let's see if we can sort it out for you. <sighs> Tully, will you take some notes? Yes, Sergeant. Now, you say you were left this money. Yes. How? Well, in his will. In your uncle's will? Yes. <laughs> when? Oh, two months ago, I think. Maybe longer. I don't know. We were never in touch. Now did you hear about the money? A bank manager came to see me. He told me my uncle had died and that he was the executor and that I'd been left £9,028. Didn't you ask the bank manager where it had come from? Oh, yes. Uh, I thought maybe my uncle had won it or something. But he hadn't. Apparently, it was paid to him. Paid to him? Yes. I'm not very good at understanding financial things, Mr Brooke. And my uncle mixed with some very strange people. Could you find out where he got it? You think it might not be honest money? I haven't touched a penny of it yet. I have to know first. We'll make some inquiries, Miss Orcott. Oh, thank now, you. Now, if you'll give DC Tully the name of the bank and the manager. Um, I have his card. Mm -hmm. Here. The manager is Mr Blackett. Right. We'll see what we can do for you. Oh, one piece of advice. Yes. Now, if you are worried... Hold on to the money. We'll be in touch. Thank you. This way, miss. What was the point of that, Sarge? Hold on to it. If a bank gave it to her, it's their risk. She can spend it. The point, Tully, is I'd like to know a bit more about this. We all remember Denison. How did a layabout like him come into this load of money? I want to know where it came from. 9,000 quid. Oh, have it been left to me? Dreams, Tully, dreams. Back to work. Let's get on with it. Yes, Sarge. CID, Sergeant Harrison. Who is it? Oh, yes, Mr Blake. Yeah, as far as I know, the matter is being dealt with. 
Oh, if you wish, I'll speak to Mr Roach about it. Yep. Yeah, I'll let you know. Morning, Jim. Morning, Dave. How goes it? OK, yeah. Hey, do you remember that old layabout, Dennison? Tim Dennison? Did you know he died? Yeah, about three months ago. How'd it happen? Oh, he had one too many. Died in his sleep. Yeah, well, sleeping rough, was he? Well, as far as I know. Why are you interested? I have to see his bank manager. His bank manager? You're joking. No, believe it or not, the old boy ended up with a bank account and an executor. He died a capitalist? <laughs> well, well, well. Jim, let's Yes, Mr Roach. Ah, oh, Jim. I've had a note from C11, a case that shouldn't take you too long. Now, this photograph from CRO. Recognise him? Uh, oh, it's Langley, isn't it? Alan Langley. Mm. Seems he's back on our territory, living with a woman. Now, here's the address. If he's still there, bring him in. If he isn't, find out where he's gone. What's he wanted for? Questioning. He's part in some heavy jaw robberies. How, how recent is this information, sir? Or oh, about a week old. If he's not on the patch, just report to me. Yes, sir. Where's Dave gone? To see a bank manager. Money problems? No, strictly duty. Oh. That woman he was seeing, Mary Alcott. Oh, yes. Thanks for sparing the time, Mr Blackett. Not at all, Sergeant. Sit down. Thank you. I got your phone message. <clears throat> now, how can I help you? It's about Miss Alcott. Oh, yes. Uh, you said she has some worries about the money she's been left. That's right. Well, I can assure you there's no reason for her to be worried. No reason at all. And her uncle did have an account with your bank? Yes. For how long? It was opened about ten months ago. Mm -hmm. What, by him? Yes, by him. Did you ask where the money came from? It came through normal banking channels. It was a bequest from a will, I believe. Just as, in turn, the remainder was left to his niece in his will. The remainder? Uh, yeah, the sum actually left to Mr Dennison was £11,000. He spent part of it, but then, of course, he didn't survive long. You knew he was a vagrant, had been living rough for years? Mm, I'd heard those stories about him. My staff said he was well known in the area, always asking for handouts, stopping people in the street. But he made an effort when he came to see me. New coat, new shoes, clean shaven. Did he? Yes, as though he wanted to change his way of life. I tried to advise him. I arranged for him to draw a weekly allowance, you know, enough for him to live on, to afford to rent a room. And because of his state of health, I suggested that he made a will. He didn't know much about his family. He'd lost touch with them. He told me he had a sister who was dead and she had a daughter who was his only next of kin. Miss Alcott? Yes, and that he would like to leave his money to her. It took me some time to trace her and to check that she was his only next of kin. She must have been surprised. Well, yes, at first, and then pleased. Do you know who left the bequest to Denison? No. Mm. Just one more thing, sir. All police inquiries have to end with a report. Um, so, could I have the name of the solicitors? Yes, certainly. Uh, Creswell Osborne and Partners. Very reputable, I believe. You know of them? Mm. Yes, sir. And that's the story, is it? As much as we know of it, sir. An old down and out falls heir to £11,000. And on the day it was paid into an account for him, he turns up a changed man. Clean shaven, new shoes, new clothes. Why? Doesn't sound like the Denison we knew. No. Have you found out where the windfall came from? Yeah, from a law firm, all legal and correct. But have a look at which law firm? Creswell, Osborne and Partners. Mm. Puts a different light in it, doesn't it? They act for some of the biggest villains in town. Dave, because they defend villains, it doesn't follow that they are villains. No, sir, but you know what they're like. And if they slipped 11,000 to an old layabout like old Denny, I'd like to know why. I mean, what did he do to earn it? And which of their so-called clients put up the money? What are you getting at? Well, it's my suspicious mind, I suppose. Let me have a go at it with Tully, sir. All right, if you think it's worth it. Oh, but before you leave, have a look at this photo. Mm. Do you remember him? Oh, yeah. Alan Langley, isn't it? Around again, is he? Yeah. Living in Markham Street with the Mrs Yates. Jim has gone to check. But if you see him, get him off our patch, will you? Right, we'll do, sir. Yeah, and I'll see if the collator has anything on Denison. <coughs> uh, Mrs Yates? Yeah? I've come to see Mr Langley. Is he in? No, he isn't. Well, do you know when he'll be back? I was told I'd find him here. Well, he isn't here. Who are you? I'm Detective Sergeant Harrison. Can I come in? No, you can't. Well, I'll have to talk on the doorstep, ma'am, if you don't mind the neighbours watching. What do you want to see him about? I'd rather talk about it inside. Oh, all right. Do you always do that? Pretend you're a friend? I didn't say I was a friend, ma'am. I asked if he was in. And I asked if you knew when he'd be back. He won't be back. You sure of that? Well, didn't say he'd be back. Why do you want to see him? What's he done? We well, don't know he's done anything. We just think he can help us with an inquiry, ma'am. That's all. When did you last see him? 
Look, Mrs Yates, I'm simply making an inquiry. I'd like some help from you and from Mr Langley. We know he was living here last week. Get it right. He was not living here, he was staying here, that's all. Sorry, ma'am. Well, if you must know, he stayed here for a week and he shared my son's room. Paid money for it. When did you last see him? He left on Monday. Did he say where he was going? He said he was going to the country. He had some business to do. He didn't say when he was coming back. Did he leave anything here? How do you mean? Well, if he intended to come back, he might have left some things. A case, clothes. No, he didn't. Where did you meet him? What's that to do with you? Well, I'm just inquiring, ma'am. In my local, we got chatting and he said he needed somewhere to stay. I needed the money, so he came to me. And he shared your son's room? Right. Can I see the room? No. Why not? It's my son's room. Where is he, Mrs Yates? He's out. If you want to see his room, ask him. It's just a routine inquiry, Mrs Yates. I really want to know where I can find Mr Langley. Look, I didn't mean to be rude, but all that stuff about him and me got up my nose. That's quite all right. If he comes back, will you tell him we'd like to see him? Yeah. Bye, Mrs Yates. Bye. Morning, Sarge. Morning, Charlie. What have you been up to? I've been backtracking on your friend Dennison. Oh, yeah. Any joy? Not much. Got the same stuff you did. He was still bumming around and getting drunk right till the end, but not sleeping rough so often. He had a room of his own. Yeah, and buying a better class of booze and more of it. The money didn't change him, did it? No, just finished him off quicker. So, how'd he die? Drank too much, got as far as the railway arches, fell down on a cold night, and he was found next morning by the beat bobby. Like that? Yeah. Do you want me to keep on with it? Yeah, have a chat with the beat men. Ask if they ever saw him with anyone known to us. OK. And I'll check and see what Mr Roach has come up with. Yes, Dave? Uh, yeah, you were checking with the collator, sir, about old Denison. Oh, yes, just a second. Yeah, here it is. Now, it goes back a year. They've done a good job, Dave, on the lines you were thinking. Informants, arrests, remands, charges, trials. And they came up with something. Denison was a witness. A witness? At the Old Bailey, no less. And the dates fit. Giving evidence for the defence? What else? In defence of a villain called Mike Taylor. And don't tell me Taylor was acquitted. Of course. A witness. Well, it makes sense, doesn't it? It accounts for the new clothes. He'd have to be kitted up to impress the jury. Oh, I would think so. Do we know what his evidence was? Well, I've asked for a copy of the court transcript. We'll know when we've read it. The instructing solicitors were your friends Creswell, Osborne and Putnam's. Who paid the money into his account. Mm. I'll go and see Messrs Creswell and Osborne. Oh, don't bother. Try Mr Winton. He's a ruling force in the partnership. Deals with the villains. Oh, and Dave, mm. you see him in total ignorance. You suspect nothing. You've just come from the bank manager who suggested Winton can help you. <laughs> yes, sir. Mr Winton? I'm at your service, Sergeant. Well, it's about a client of yours, sir. Mr Dennison, Timothy Dennison. Uh, a client of ours? Mm, so I've been told, sir. A client whom you paid some money, £11,000. <sighs> I'm sorry, I don't understand. Nor do I, sir. It's just an inquiry routine. I was told by a bank manager that you paid this sum into his branch, to the account of Mr Dennison. We did? <laughs> yes, sir, you did. Excuse me. Yes, sir? Uh, do we have a file from Mr. Dennison? If we do, find it and bring it to me. Yes, Mr. Winton. Uh, now, while we're waiting, Sergeant, <clears throat> perhaps you will tell me the reason for the inquiry. Well, perhaps it would help if I tell you that the payment was made about ten months ago. You could have forgotten. We might have. We're a busy practice, Sergeant. And it was a bequest of some sort. A will, maybe. We would like to have the name of the person who made the bequest. I see. The fact is, you see, that this Mr Dennison who received the money, well, the best way to describe him is as a tramp, a down and out, and if you had met him, you wouldn't forget him. Yes? I'm afraid we don't have a file on the Mr Dennison, sir. Oh, thank you. Uh, you heard that, Sergeant? Yes, sir. I'm sorry to have troubled you. You still haven't told me the reason, Sergeant. Well, there's not much I can tell you, sir. We're trying to trace his benefactor, but if you can't help, I'll have to take the inquiry elsewhere. I see. Well, I'd like to help you, Sergeant. We are a large firm. Several partners, many juniors. Uh, perhaps one of the others might remember. I can check. If you would, sir. It might take a day or two. Of course. You saw Winton? Yes, sir. He played the innocent right up to the hilt. Never heard of Dennison. Solid as a rock. Until I said I was taking the inquiry elsewhere. And then? He hedged a bit, played for time. It would take him a day or two to check. Time to cover his tracks? Time to cover someone else's tracks. You said nothing about the old Bailey? No, sir. Or about Dennison being dead. Yeah, OK, Dave. Well, we'll wait for the transcript and see what actually happened. Yes, sir. How's it going, Dave? It's coming along. How about you? Langley? Yeah. 
Well, I saw his, uh, his landlady, Mrs Yates. She says he's gone. Went off Monday morning to the country. Well, it's his style, isn't it? Country houses, easy pickings for jewel thefts. She expecting him back? Says she doesn't know. <laughs> Do you believe her? Nah, they're more than just good friends. I thought of putting a watch on the house, but it could be a waste of time. Well, if she warns him, he won't come back. If he does, it's out of my hands. Just report and forget. CID, does he tell Who? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll tell him. Sarge? Yeah? Miss Alcott again. Wants to see you. She's downstairs. OK, bring your notebook. <clears throat> I uh, heard you've been asking about my uncle. Speaking to people. Well, DC Tully has, yes. Is there anything new you can tell me? Well, not really, madam. We uh, found out the circumstances of his death. He died on the way back to his room, under the railway arches, one very cold night. Yes. Only his uh, bank manager knew about it, and he arranged the funeral. Have you spoken to Mr Blackett? Yes, we have. About the money? Yep. Well, in his view, you've nothing to worry about. Oh. He says you can spend it as you wish. That's good, then. Yeah, but it doesn't answer your question, or ours, does it? Why your uncle was paid so much money. If Mr Blackett said I could spend it, then... Then what? Then I would like to leave my job, Mr Brook. I've never had a real holiday, and with the money I could do that. I've been thinking... Maybe I was silly coming to you. I've been wasting your time. I don't think you were silly, miss, and it's no trouble to us. But my advice to you is to hold on to the money for a few more days. I'll let you know. A few more days? Yeah. We'll be in touch. If you say so, Sergeant. Thank you. OK. This way, miss. Goodbye. Well, still being rough on us, Sarge. You want to prove the money's bent. She came to us in the first place, remember? Yeah, but she's changed her mind. She's now dreaming of what she can spend it on. Yeah, but what if I'm right? She couldn't afford to pay it back. You're letting your feelings get the better of you, Tully. Our job is to investigate crime. <sighs> yeah, yeah, you're right, Sarge. Excuse me, Sergeant. Yes, Constable. Uh, Duke Sergeant has a message for you. Yeah? Well, a teenager's been brought in trying to flog a gold bracelet in the high street. He's only asking a couple of quid. I say it's worth a couple of hundred. Put it in your league. Uh huh. Is there a statement? No, it's just this. What, his name and address? Yeah. Yeah, well. Yes, this could be something for Sergeant Harrison. Thank you, Constable. All right, sir. Tully, you go and talk to the lad. I'll tell Jim. OK, Tully. What's it about? It's about this bracelet, Sarge. He was trying to sell it in the high street. I wasn't trying to sell it. I was just asking how much it was worth. Quiet, son. I'll come to you in a minute. Yes, Tully. He visited two second-hand shops and then a jeweller's. The jeweller's found us. I was just showing it, wasn't I? Ask him what it would fetch. How much did they say? Well, one place said two quid. I told them I wasn't selling it. And two quid was daft, I know that much. Where'd you get it from? You steal it? No, I didn't. Where'd you get it, then? I found it. You found it? You hear that, Tully? Yeah, right, little comedian. Well, where did you find it? Well, all right, what's his name? Lawrence Yates, Sergeant. Age 17, unemployed, lives in Markham Street. And found in possession of stolen property. Go and fetch his mother. No, please! Why not? It'll make trouble, it'll worry her. All right, Lawrence, let's try another way. Let you and I have a talk, OK? Now, why were you going round asking what this is worth? I just wanted to know, that's all. Well, I can tell you, it's worth more than a couple of pounds. It's more like a couple of hundred pounds. I didn't steal it. No, but you know who did steal it, don't you? <sighs> all right, Yates, I'm going to take you home. I know all about you. We're going to your room. My room? Yeah, and you're going to show me where you found it. Tully, take him along. Afternoon, Mrs Yates. What do you want? Why have you got my son with you? Laurie, what's happened? I'm sorry, Mum. Mrs Yates, your son's going to take us to his room. There's something he's going to show us. What have you been doing to him? Nothing, Mum. They just talk to me. Mrs Yates, is your son going to take us to his room or will you? I'll take you. Come in. What's he done? On the way over, Mrs Yates, your son was telling us a few things about your lodger, Mr Langley. Seems he was always flush with money. Is it true? I suppose so. And Lawrence told us he left a case behind. I didn't know about that. Your son thought we might like to take a look at it. Why'd you say that, Laurie? I'm sorry, Mum. This is my room. All right, Lawrence, show us the case. He left it under here. This is it. Yeah. It's locked. You've got a key? It's a combination lock. I worked it out. 
It was none of your business, Laurie. But it is our business, Mrs Yates. There you are. Underneath the shirts. These. Mm. Two gold chains, three bracelets and some diamond rings. And this is where you found the bracelet? Yes. And you shared this room with Alan Langley? Yes, they shared this room. Lawrence, if you'd been offered some more for that bracelet, would you have sold it? No. Why not? Well, he's coming back. I was just curious, that's all. See what it was worth. Is he coming back, Mrs Yates? <sighs> yes. Did he say when? He said he'd be back in a week. Which could be tomorrow. Yes. Mrs Yates, I'm taking this case and your son to the station. No. It's likely we'll return the case with just the clothes in it. If we get reasonable cooperation, we might let your son bring it back. I see. You have to make up your mind whose side you're on. It's up to you. Alan Langley's or your son's? All right. I'll let you know when he comes back. Thank you. Ah, there you are, Tully. How'd it go? Sergeant Harrison has brought back a case with some jewellery and things. He's checking to see if they're nicked. Well, if Langley had them, they're nicked. You're just in time to see Mr Roach. What about? Oh, Dennison. The court transcript's arrived. Roach wants me to tell him about it. you better come along too. Yeah. Ah, oh, Dave. Tully. Close the, uh, close the door. Finish the transcript? Yeah, makes good reading, sir. And makes old Denny sound cheap at the price. Right, here it is. Four villains do a strong room. They get away with £400,000. They're rounded up, put in the dock. And one walks free. Mike Taylor, on the evidence of our Mr Dennison. Right, yeah. According to him, it was a Friday night. There's this all-night coffee stall out on that derelict ground by Church Street. Yeah, I know. The only one left in the district. Yeah. Anyway, the range belting down, only one customer left. Dennison, sheltering against the side of the stall. Then a car arrives. What time was this? Uh, just after midnight, sir. Oh. Anyway, the bloke from the car sprints across to buy some cigarettes. Sees the old fella sheltering. And since the rain is still belting down, offers him a lift. Dennison accepts and gets a ride to the high street. And when they reach the high street, he slips the old boy a few quid introduces himself and tells him if he's ever in trouble to get in touch and there'd be more. Very touching. Mm -hmm. And we know that very same moment, that wet Friday night, four villains were ripping open a strong room down in Woolwich. But one of them couldn't have been Mike Taylor, could he? No, because when Dennison was asked who was the man who gave him a lift that night, he pointed to Mike Taylor sitting in the dock and Mike Taylor goes free. An honest story, Sarge, or an alibi? Well, you have to believe it. Why? Well, because there was the evidence of the bloke running the coffee stall. He saw the meeting and heard Dennison being offered the lift. What's his name, this coffee stall man? Uh, it's, uh, yeah, here it is. It's James Parkins and an address for him. Right, find him, Tully, would you? Bring him here. Yes, sir. Oh, and Dave, hmm? I'll keep the transcript in my office for the time being. Oh, and keep me informed. Yes, sir. Uh, is Tully around? No, you just missed him. He's out on a job. Uh, tell him Alan Lang is expected back. He'll want to know. Right, I'll tell him. The coffee stall bloke's in the interview room, Sarge. I've had a chat with him. Good. Then you can do the talking. OK, in we go. Mr Parkins, this is Sergeant Brooke. Now, I want you to tell him what you told me. Yeah, well, like I said, this bloke came to the coffee store one night about quarter past twelve. I was alone except for old Denny, and this bloke drives up, buys some cigarettes, and buys old Den a pie and a cutter, gives him a fag, chats to him for a while, and then give old Den a lift in his car. Had you seen this man before? No. Nope. Where did they go? Oh, I don't know, do I? And then? Well, the bloke comes back a couple of nights later, same time, and asks if I remember him buying cigarettes, meeting old Den, giving him a lift, the whole bit. And I said I remembered. And he said there'd be some money in it if I remembered something else. Like what? Well, he showed me a photograph. I was to remember that that was the man who bought the fags and give old Den a lift, and not him. It was a photograph of Mike Taylor, Sarge. This happened two weeks after the robbery, when all four, including Taylor, had been arrested. I see. There was something else you had to say, Mr Parkins, wasn't there? Yeah, I was to say it was raining the night he'd give old Den a lift. Was it? No. But it was raining the night of the robbery, Sarge. And you agreed to say all this? Well, that's nearly true, wasn't it? You said it wouldn't get me into trouble. I'd, I'd see the bloke in the photograph in the dock and just point to him. That's all. Old Den would do the rest. Did you hear Dennison give his evidence? Yeah, he did it good. And he looked good too. They fixed him up with a suit, you know, smartened him up. He looked a dead reliable witness. And the jury believed him. It was a put-up job. Wow. And how much were you paid? 
Expenses, that's all. Two days in court, food, waiting, 50 quid. Will you make a statement? I told you, mate, no. Why not? Because it's down to Denison, not me. All I had to do was point and say it was raining. Anyway, the bloke who told a real pork he's in with us. So we a lay off. We need a statement. No, it's too long ago. It's all forgot. You can't make me. No, you're right, Mr. Parkins. We can't make you. All right, let's sit then. Can I go? Yeah, yeah, off with you. So, <clears throat> well, like you said, Sarge, that's it. Yeah, great. Denison's dead, and Parkins is too scared to help. <laughs> we can tell Miss Alcott to get up the holiday brochures, can't we? Yeah, yeah, she can spend the money, and Mike Taylor stays free and keeps his lot too. You finished, in here, Dave? What's the rush? We brought in Langley. Nicked him coming from another jewellery job. Can I borrow your DC? We're short today. Yeah, why not? Oh, thanks, Sarge. Cheer up. Yeah, well, it's how it goes, isn't it? You lose one, you win one. 